I finally got done with my homework so I can finally continue and finish this series kinda with uh, the part 2 of the inventory. Um, thank you for the the, com the comments on the first part, especially this coder dev guy, oh, I'm putting a screenshot in. He, he watched both of my two tutorials I've made so far. I just think it's kind of funny when he told us exactly what he needed and the next video is just saying oh, all cash, this is also what I needed. That's kind of funny. But yeah, thank you for liking my video vid videos. I hope you subscribed. Anyway, I'll begin on with the part two and where I have made some UI interaction. It's not perfect, but it was my idea on how I wanted to make it and I hope you guys can get some value out of that. So let's just begin. Alright, so the first thing I kind of wanted to do, I wanted to have uh, some UI which will kind of display some information about the the item inside of my inventory. This is just a quick design. I'm, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm not a graphic designer, so this is, this is what you, what you're gonna get. You can make your own, but uh, but uh, I'm just gonna show this in practice. If I didn't end up showing, I'm just showing it anyway. And the how it works is that you can click on items and you will get the descriptions of it based on. The different item stats that we defined in the first part. Uh, the way this works is this clicked item has a script. It has some variables. It has a variable for the click slot. It has, and also the rarity colors and all the different text with for the item name, rarity, weight, value, types, max, stack, description, whatever, and. I have them right here, and it's pretty simple. We have this this public variable for a slot, which we made in the first part. I did make some modification for that. I'll show that later. But I didn't change this code. It just has a reference to the item inside of the slot, slot and that is what we want to get out of this pub public variable. When we just update all the text with this void setup, we just update the text. We have some switch statements for the enums, for rarities and types. And that's it. It's, it's not really that com complicated. Uh, oh yeah, and I use something called a void on enable. If you don't know the void on enable, I when I've tried teaching people programming, they, they don't really know this function. This is a function that just gets called when an object becomes enabled and active. So when right now it's disabled, enabled. So when it's get on, enabled, it just runs the function and it's set up itself. So yeah, that's cool. And yeah, this is the UI interaction script. This UI interact in interaction script is on every single slot, as you can see right here, and it has a, and they all also have a reference to this clicked item, which uh, displays the inf information right here. So yeah, that's good. Now I'm gonna get into the code. I'm making use of the pointer interfaces. Actually, before I did this, I, ha I have used these eye pointers before, but I forgot that they were interfaces, and I was like, hmm, I don't really, I, I never really have used interface myself, and then I looked into it, and I was like, enlightened. This is like, I'm going to make a, a video about it, interfaces, because I think it's really useful, because it can make a lot of complicated things more simple, and I'm not going to get into that. Right now, we're just using... Unity's iPointer interfaces for our script. So when you make these pointer interfaces, they want a, a script. Let me just have an example. If I have this begin drag, I'm just gonna comment this out. This interface will complain. You can just right click it, quick actions, implement interface, 
and right here in the bottom, it will make the interface. And then it will stop complaining. And then you can just have the code you want inside of it. But yeah, I have made... So I'm using these different events. I have a point of click when we click on a slot. I have a begin drag and then a drag handler for when I'm actually dragging. And then when I'm, I stop dra dragging, and then I have a um, hover exit handler when the mouse leaves the slot. So I'm going to explain every single event that I've made. So I'm going to take the click first. It's right here. So when I click on a slot, I am getting the event data and the point of click. This is the game object that I have clicked on. This is the slot of any of these inside the inventory panel. I get a reference to it. Then I check its slot component because it has that on it too. And I check if it just has an item inside of it. And if the inventory you and if the clicked item UI is also active in the hierarchy because if it's already active because if it's already active, I don't really need it. And if the this statement turned true, I just return because that means we either don't have an item inside the slot or we have already clicked the slot and it displays the clicked item UI. But if it returns false, we do the rest of the code, which is that we take the clicked UI and its position to the mouse position in pixel in pixel size because the UI canvas has the, the screen width in pixel size. And then we just plus and this is kinda annoying. We get we get a reference to the UI's rect transform. We basically take its width right here times the scale right down here and divide it by two. And I do it plus one because I don't want to, I wasn't sure, I, this is just some safety one because I was scared of it on the exact pixel, the mouse was gonna hover over it. I, I didn't want that because then it can, no clip down, right back. You, you, can, you can check if it works if you're doing plus one. I just did a plus one just to be safe. And we also have a, have on the C coordinate, we also calculate its height times the scale multiplier divided by two. Not a plus one, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do that. Actually a minus one. And that's it. This is a calculated offset. This is the offset that makes it so, so the UI just gets, it just spawns at the, at the corner of the mouse, which I just think is nice. Nice. If we didn't do that, it would just spawn in the middle of the mouse position. So good offset to have, kind of annoying to read, but it works. We also get a reference to the clicked item and we, and we set its clicked slot to be this game object we clicked on and its slot component. And that's it. And then we set it to true. Beautiful. That's the point of click. Then we also have the on pointer exit when we stop hovering a slot and then we just set the UI to false. So when we leave it. So yeah, that was two functions here. Then we have, and this is where it gets a little bit com complicated when we try to drag I an item. So when we want to drag an item, we first want to check if it has a slot. It, does it already have an item inside of it? If it doesn't have an item in it, we cannot begin dragging. So yeah. Anyway, if we do have an item inside of it, we begin the drag and we need to set its parent of the item because the f to this transform. The logic behind this is that we have the slot which, which has this component and we want this to be the parent because the dra drag slot is actually going to be this image inside of it, this right here because that, that's gonna display the actual item we, we're gonna have inside of it. But we need a reference to the parent, which is the entire slot. So we can 
use the item inside of it and give it when we want to like drop it in, in a new cell we need to do some calculations but anyway we also define the direct item and we just get the component in children raw image dot transform and we also take the and I'm just taking the text which is the text right here that displays the amount inside the slot I just turn it off because I just think it's nice and then I also take drag items dot parent and then I find the actual canvas because when we start dragging we actually want the this raw image to not be a child of the actual slot right now because we want to track drag it across the entire canvas so we make its parent to be the canvas you can I can show you again an example I'm gonna try and drag on the first slot right here then when I drag this you can see the image disappears and that's because oh I lost it I lost the reference So this image does get returned, but but we uh, but you can see when I try to drag the slot inside here, it becomes a child of the actual canvas. So yeah, that's that's just nice. And also I just found out that I actually can drag inside the same slot. That's actually a bug, kind of annoying. I hope you can fix that yourself because I'm not going to. <laughs> but yeah, we begin the drag and then we start dragging and then we just take the drag item and set it to the mouse position. And also we take the raw image and it has a raycast target equals to false. That's because when we actually are dragging, we shoot a raycast on the UI and what it hits, it will tag. And we don't want the image when we want to, for example, drop an item in the new slot we don't want the image to block that so I just turn this to false for the time being and then the on and drag we just put the item back to its parent and we do right here we set its parent back to the original slot it says local position to be zero and turns its raycast target back and enable the text when we also take the slot of the game object and makes it set its stats because if we if if we did if we did drag it onto a new slot then it will just update itself with the set st set stats fee function which we made in the first part also we just we set the dragged item and dragged item parity equals to null because we didn't want to do that okay that's good that's all the functions then the way then if you're experienced with coding you probably then thought, okay, so how did you make it drag into another slot? And actually, I made a drop handler interface inside the slot itself. Inside this drop handler, we we, we get a reference to the item that's actually being dropped, which is going to be the image we were dragging before. Then we also get a reference to the draggable item by t saying dropped dot get component UI interaction, and when we, and then after we have defined that, we get a reference to the slot, which is going to be its parent, which we defined here on the begin drag, right he right here. Then after that, if we actually dropped on another slot, then we take the item in slot is equals to the slot dot item in slot the amount in slot is equals to slot dot amount in slot and then we set the slot dot items equals to null and then the amount is equals to zero and set stats also I can I found out the bug and why we can't drop on on the same slot that is because we didn't check if the item we are dropping on is actually the same slot we can just quickly do that <laughs> So if this slot is equals to this, 
in re return we don't want to do any more fuss i actually think that just fixed it some real time some real time debugging so yeah let me damn it okay my heart was in the right place I'm sure this this makes sense. Yeah. When we also just have this this birch wood is also it's good to put on. But we, we we can fix that. When we, we, we fixed one bug and now and and now one came, but hey, at least we don't get any errors now. So yeah. Update. We check if we are dropping on the same slot, if we are, just return because we don't need to do something new. But if it's not the same slot, then we update the new slot and take the slots and set this items and amount to zero. And then we set the stats. All right, that's good. I hope that makes it made sense. So yeah, I covered everything except for one. And so the last thing I made, I also did so we can drop items outside of uh, when, when we yeah drag and drop the item outside of the UI when we just drop it down on the floor. And that's actually really simple. I'm actually cheesing this by having, if I'm just going to turn this off, I actually have an invisible image which has a raycast target which is behind which is at the back of the entire canvas it is everything is in front this ui is at the whole back so it doesn't block anything it's only where there isn't ui where you can actually hit it with the raycast target smart right then i just have an item drop handler when we just do the same thing as we uh, did in this lot to get a reference to the item we are actually dragging and then we get a reference to the player and when we just take the item in slot and take the prefab and spawn it at the player position and also we, we then take that items and get component and use the the item object which we made in the first part and said that amounts to the slot dot amount in slot and then we just empties the slot we're dropping in it's it's not really that hard to wrap your head around and that's it that's the entire that's the entire thing i made i'm not going to do more of this unless people want Unless people want more explanations for for things I did for for things I didn't cover, this is the basis I want to cover. Like I'm not trying personally to make an inventory because I'm not making a game which requires an inventory, but I do think a lot of people I did see that a lot of people online and also people I'm helping program they all want an inventory for some reason. So I thought you know what I'm gonna make one and then I hope it can help you. To get a better understanding of what it requires to make an inventory and then make something beautiful also remember the, the item object the birch wood if you want to do this yourself remember when you want to actually make the item drop for some for the stone you need to set these items as prefabs and then drag and drop them inside the the, the pref available on descriptable objects with like this also set the amount to zero so you don't get any bugs anyway this is it this is my really simple inventory system and i hope you enjoyed goodbye